and welcome to Lesson 3.5. In Lesson 3.5, we're going to continue our work with rational numbers. Only this time, we're going to concentrate on the division. So in this lesson, you have to learn how to divide decimals and divide fractions. Now, we've done division, division of decimals and fractions before. However, we've never incorporated the positive and negatives. So in some ways, this is a review for you. If you're having any difficulty with dividing and multiplying of decimals, please go back and revisit the grade 8 and the grade 7 videos. You can quickly find them online on YouTube for you. So before we can begin, let's have a review of dividing in integers. So remember, that when the signs are the same, it's positive. When the signs are different, it's negative. So quickly write down the, final, the four answers to these quick questions here on division. Okay, well, negative divided by negative is a positive, 12 divided by 4 is 3. Negative divided by positive is negative, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. Since they're all 3, all we have to worry about is the signs. The signs are different, that makes it negative. The signs are the same, that makes it positive. Now, these four rules are going to be applied in both fractions as well as in decimals. So, how do we divide decimals? Or in, or what are the rules for integers? When the signs are the same, the quotient is positive. When the signs are different, the quotient is negative. Remember, the word quotient is the result of a dividing question. So let's review the concept now of the reciprocal, because we can, before we can divide fractions, we have to know what a reciprocal is. So the reciprocal of a fraction is the number that is multiplied to get a product of 1. So we think of that as flipping it. So 2 over 3 has a reciprocal of 3 over 2, and that's because 2 times 3 is 6, and 3 times 2 is 6, and 6 divided by 6 is 1. So anytime you multiply a number by its reciprocal, you get 1. So quickly, what are the reciprocals of A, B, and C? Pause the recording and do that. Okay, here we go. These are your answers. Notice in each case, the numerator and the denominator swapped places. Okay, now, let's go to the next one. So dividing fractions. This is also a, re a review for you. When you divide fractions, everything has to be in mixed form. Oh, sorry, in improper form. You cannot do it in mixed form. So if you look here, I don't have mixed forms yet, but I do have a 4. You have to remember that 4 becomes 4 over 1. Okay. And now this is where we flip and multiply. So the 5 over 6 becomes its reciprocal, and the divide turns into a multiply. So now we can do top times top, 4 times 6 and the bottom times bottom, 1 times 5. Now just do the calculation. 4 times 6 is 24, and 1 times 5 is 5, so your answer is 24 over 5, which does not reduce. If you wish, you can put it into a mixed format, and that's 4 and 4 fifths, but you don't have to. All right, here's one that doesn't have a 1, but how about you get a try of this? Pause the recording and do this question. Okay, so remember, flip and multiply. 5 over 7 becomes 7 over 5. The divide becomes a multiply. So now 2 times 7 over 3 times 5. And your answer is 14 over 15, which does not reduce. Okay, turn to the next page. Okay, now when we get a negatives in here, what you do is you, multiply, or you divide first, and then you apply the rules of the positives and negatives. So just ignore the negative on the 2 for now. You've got 2 over 3 divided by 5 over 7. The 5 over 7 becomes its reciprocal. Now, negative 2 times 7 is on the top, and 3 times 5 is on the bottom. When the signs are different, it's negative, so negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. And 3 times 5, the signs are the same, so it's positive, so that gives you negative 14 over 15. See now that we're working with mixed numbers. Now, mixed numbers cannot be multiplied as they stand. They've got to be changed into improper fractions. To do that, you take the numerator, 3, multiply it by the whole number, 2, and then add the, I say, take the denominator, 3, multiply by the whole number, 2, and add the numerator. Forget about this, not, this negative sign here first. Just go 3 times 2 plus 1, and that gives you 7 thirds. We'll worry about the negatives later, okay? 4 times 1 plus 1 gives you 5 over 4. Now, you have to do the flip and multiply because we're dividing fractions. So 5 over 4 becomes its reciprocal, which is 4 over 5. And I stuck the negative back in there, and I put the negative back in on this one. So now we're back with our negatives. 
7 times 4 is 28. 3 times 5 is 15. A negative times a negative is a positive, and a positive times a positive is a positive. So your final answer is 28 over 15. You can place it in mixed form if you wish. Okay? Pause the recording and try this one. All right, so first thing we have to take is put the 4 and 5 sixths into, mixed, into improper form. 6 times 4 is 24, plus 5 gives me 29 over 6. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 1 is 9, so we have a negative 9 over 8. Now, flip and multiply. The divide becomes a multiply, and the 9 over 8 becomes 8 over 9. Now, what I did here is I realized that um, 2 goes into both 6 and 8, so I kind of cancel. I divided the top and the bottom by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 6 divided by 2 is 3. This is called canceling out. And what that leaves you with is 29 times 4 over 3 times 9, which gives us 116 over 27, which in improper form is negative 4 and 8 twelfths. If you don't want to do this now, just do 29 times 8 and 6 times 9, and you'll get, uh, you know, your numbers will be a little bit bigger but you'll, you'll be fine as long as you reduce it down. What's the quotient of negative 4 and 3 quarters divided by 2 and 5 6? So pause the recording and try this one. All right, so let's take a look. There's your question. You have to put it down because it's a divide question. Now, 4 times 4 is 16, plus 3 is 19. Keep the negative. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 5 is 17. Since we're dividing fractions, we flip and multiply. This one remains the same. 17 over 6 becomes 6 over 17. Now I notice that 2 goes into both 6 and 4, so 2 goes into 6 3 times, 2 goes into 4 twice. This just does a little bit, reduces the size of the numbers. So now I have negative 19 times 3, and 2 times 17, which gives me negative 57 over 34, you can put it in a mixed format if you wish. Okay, here's a word problem for us. Bob worked at the construction site for five and a half hours in one week. George worked for two and four-fifth times as long as Bob that week. On Thursday, they both worked two hours that week. How much time did George work that week at the construction site? So it says here that um, we got information about Thursday, but the word Thursday um, it's actually irrelevant. What you see here is five and a half, um, and George worked two and four fifth times as much as Bob's. So this is, in fact, a multiplication question. Now, I know we've been doing multiplying and dividing, and this lesson is more on dividing, but we can throw a multiplication one in here too. So, first thing you need to do is take five and a half and two and four fifths and turn them into their improper forms. It's five times two is 10 plus one is 11. Five times two is 10 plus four is 14. Now, top times top and bottom times bottom gives you 11 times 14, all over 2 times 5. And then, of course, using your calculator, you'll find that 11 times 14 is 154, and 2 times 5 is 10. When you reduce it and use your calculator, you'll find it's 15 and 2 fifths. This is a word problem, so you have to have a sentence. So in this case, you're going to have 15, sorry, George worked 15 and 2 fifth hours at the construction site that week. Now, what about dividing rational numbers in decimal form? Well, we've already done dividing in just decimals, so this is kind of a, a, a review, but let's take a look at it. Um, dividing rational numbers in decimal form, we have to review the concept we covered first in grade 6. Now, that was a long time ago, so some of you may not remember it. But let's start with 5 divided into 185. So first off, you want to find out how many times does 5 go into 1. Well, it doesn't go in, so let's include the 8. How many times does 5 go into 18? Well, that is 15 times. Sorry, 15, because 5 times 3 is 15, so it goes in 3 times. 5 goes into 18 3 times, and 3 times 5 is 15. When you subtract, you get a 3. Now, bring down 5. How many times does 5 go into 35? 7 times. And 5 times 7 is 35. So when you subtract it, 35, take away 35, is 0. So your answer is 5 goes into 185 37 times. Now, let's add a decimal. The first thing you do when you divide decimals is make sure that there's no decimal in your divisor. Since in this case there isn't, our first goal is just take the decimal, put it straight up. 
How many times is 3 going to 1? It doesn't, so I'm going to include the other one and just say, how many times is 3 going to 11? Well, I know that 3 goes into 11 3 times because 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 4 is 12, so that's too much. 11 take away 9, that's 2. Now I bring down the 2. 3 goes into 22 7 times, and that's 3 times 7 being 21. When I subtract it, I get a 1. Now I can bring down the other 2. 3 goes into 12 4 times, and 3 times 4 is 12, and that means when you subtract it, you get 0. If you're having any trouble with this stuff at all, you're going to have to come in and see me or get some help through um, your notes from before or from one of your friends. All right. Bob bought seven chocolate bars for a total cost of $9.03. How much did each chocolate bar cost? Seven does, in fact, go into nine. And, but our first goal is we're going to take and put the decimal straight up. So let me see if I can make that happen. Oh, no, it didn't work. There we go. There's our decimal. So 7 goes into 9 one time. And then 1 times 7 is 7. So when we subtract it, you're going to have 2. Bring down the 0. Now 7 goes into 20 twice, which is 14. 3 times would be 21, so that's too much. So it only goes twice. 7 times 2 is 14. When you subtract it, click the wrong button, you get 6. Now bring down the 3. 7 goes into 63. 9 times, because 7 times 9 is actually 63 right on the button. And 63 take away 63 is 0. So 7 goes into 9.03, times. So to answer our question, each chocolate bar costs $1.29 each. Okay. Now, let's talk about the final way this can work out. And that is, what happens when you have a decimal in your divisor? And that's the number that's out front. If you take a look up here, 7 is the divisor. Now, what happens if this was 0 0.7? I don't know if you can tell me how many times 7 tenths goes into 9, but it's very difficult to do without a lot of thinking. It's much easier to think of just 7 into 9 being going in one time. So what we need to do is to find out how do we get rid of the decimal in the divisor. Now, the divisor here is 0.4. If you do the same thing to the quotient and the divisor, nothing changes. So if I take and multiply both the divisor by 10 and the quotient by 10, I now take 0.4 and turn it into 4. I do get 714 when I multiply this by 10, but that's pretty easy to work with. So now my question is 4 divided into 714 rather than 0.4 divided into 71.4. So take a look at the answer. 4 goes into this. 178 times. So it might be wise for you just to uh, ignore the answer for a second, see if you can get the answer, and then come back and check when you get a moment. Okay, let's try another one here. Let's check with the setup first. You have two decimal places here. So you have to multiply this by 100 to get 5. If I multiply this here by 100, or move the decimal two places if you want to think that way, I have to move the decimal two places here. So that gives me 5 into 15.97. Now, I'd like you to take and divide this out. Pause the recording and divide out the answer. Okay, there you go. 5 goes into 15 three times. Subtract you get 0. Bring down the 9. 5 goes into the 9 one time. Subtract you get 4. Bring down the 7. 5 goes into 47 nine times. That's 45. Subtract you get 2. Bring down the 0, 5 goes into 20 four times, and that's 20. So you subtract, you get 0. So in fact, 5 goes into 15.970, 3.9, sorry, 3.194 times. Okay, now this is rational numbers. So the next thing we have to do is to put in the um, positive and negatives. So negative 11 divided by uh, 3, negative 11.2 divided by 3. The first thing you're going to do is ignore the sign and just do 11.2 divided by 3. So we don't have a decimal in their divisor, so it's just a matter of dividing. So let's take a look. 3 goes into 11 three times, that's a 9. Subtract, you have a 2. 3 goes into 22 seven times, that's 21. Subtract, you have a 1. Bring down the final 2. And 3 goes into 12 four times, so your final answer is 3.74. Now you can bring in the negative. Negative divided by positive is a negative. So in this example, 
you divide normally, and then you find out whether the signs are different or the same. If they're different, the answer is negative. If they're the same, the answer is positive. Okay, you're going to get some practice now. Okay, so our first job is uh, negative 0 0.237 divided by negative 0 0.6. You cannot have a decimal in the divisor. So your setup has to be get this here to have no decimal. So I multiply this by 10 or move the decimal one place. I've got to do the same over here. So this decimal in front of the 2 has to move behind the 2. So here's your setup right here. 6 into 2.37. So pause the recording and try this question. Okay, so let's take a look. This is what you should have. 6 goes into 2, or it doesn't go into 2, 0 times. And then you go into 23. 6 goes into 23 18 times, which is 3. Subtract, you get a 5. Bring down the 7. 6 goes into 57 9 times. Put the 9 up top. 54 here, 6 times 9. Subtract, you get a 3. Bring down the 0. 6 times 5 is 30, so you get 30 here. Subtract that, you get a zero. So your final answer is 0.395. So there's your quotient. Now, a negative divided by a negative, the signs are the same, so that means your quotient, your answer to the divide question is positive. Okay? This time I want you to do everything yourself. Okay, set up first. Got to get rid of the decimal and the 0.7. So that means your division is going to set up like this. Move the decimal once here, move the decimal once there. So you have 7 into 96.35. Ignore the negative and the positive for now. Now simply divide. 7 goes into 96 once, subtract it, you get 2, bring down the 6. 7 goes into 26 three times, that's 21. Subtract it, you get a 5, bring down the 5. Or the 3, sorry. Uh, 7 goes into 53 seven times, and then subtract it. You can just go down here and check your work, okay? Now, you'll notice that I stopped here at 6, and I didn't continue. That's because if I can keep going here for quite some time before I'll get an answer that starts to repeat. So what I choose to do instead is to divide to the thousands, which is the fourth place, and then round back to two decimal places. If you're not told, you round to the nearest hundredth. That's two decimal places. So the 4 does not cause the 6 to change, so you get 13.76. What happened there? <laughs> Somehow I wrote the decimal wrong. The decimal is supposed to be between the, uh, the 3 and the 7 here. And you have to divide to the nearest thousands in order to round back. That sentence doesn't quite make sense there, so you can ignore that. Now, a negative divided by a positive is a negative, so down here you should have a negative answer. If you have any questions, let me know. Come and talk to me or watch the video again. We'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you.